So is the long tradition of protesting in America being threatened? To help answer this, I'm joined now by David Seaman, journalist and host of The DL Show. Welcome to the show, David. So Congress passed new restrictions on protesting on federal grounds. Do you see this as a threat to citizens' uh, right to freedom of speech? I think it is absolutely a threat. Uh, this is a sacred, protected constitutional right. Uh, this is not something that should be infringed upon. That's why it is, in fact, the First Amendment of you know, our Bill of Rights. It's very important to us. It was very important to our founding fathers. And just to be clear with your viewers, uh, this bill, which is now a law because Obama has signed it, uh, it does not say protest is now illegal in the U.S., uh, move along, citizen. That's not what it says, which is part of the reason why it's not getting more uh, attention. What it says is actually far more insidious. Uh, it outlaws certain forms of peaceful protest. If you happen to be within close proximity to high-ranking elected officials who are receiving Secret Service protection, that can be considered a felony. And the problem here is if you take away somebody's right to get the government's attention, uh, that's a really big deal. I mean, we saw uh, the civil rights movement in the 60s. That was something that really emerged because of peaceful protest. Uh, this is traditionally how Americans influence policy on the individual level as you go out and you peacefully protest for something you believe in if things get bad enough. And to take away that right is really quite criminal and it's troubling. I mean, uh, the ACLU's analysis, they're, they're, they sort of agree with me. They're saying that it's an incremental thing that's happening. It's not as if suddenly protest is illegal everywhere, but we should fight this incremental slide because it's extremely dangerous. If you can't protest in your own nation's capital, uh, what kind of constitutional republic have we become? Now, some are calling this bill the anti-Occupy bill. Do you think the Occupy movement could have something to do with this? I, I think it's all a part of their fears, the Occupy movement. And then you have uh, shadowy groups like Anonymous, which are very hard to track. And then on top of that, you have the Tea Party on the right. Uh, there are a variety of movements. I think the government is cracking down on all of them. And they've also seen what happened in the Middle East with Arab Spring and they don't want anything similar to happen here. The problem is they're actually making this worse. Uh, you're radicalizing people out there who just, you know, hear about this on the news and might not really care about Occupy's message. Uh, you know, that might not interest them, interest them, their economic message, but then when you see that the government is quietly taking away these core constitutional rights, you now have citizens who are upset and actually do have a grievance uh, because they don't want to see those rights go away. Even if you don't plan on protesting, uh, you like to know that you do have that right. So you're saying that this could kind of add fuel to the Occupy, the Occupy fire and incite people to get angry and protest even more so? I think it does give some added legitimacy to some of the peaceful movements out there uh, that there is a problem. And one of your previous guests was talking about Ron Paul and how uh, our republic has strayed very far from our founding principles. And I think that's something that a lot of people are waking up to. And it's something we need to address. I mean, it could be addressed with new legislation to just roll back all of these things. We need to get rid of that trespass bill. H.R. 347 is pretty un-American. We need to get rid of NDAA. We need to talk about letting the Patriot Act retire, which it was supposed to do. Uh, these are things that have really destroyed our core rights over the past decade. And it's something that we can fix. That's the good news. But the problem is most people don't know, and those who do know don't necessarily care. Now, um, how would this law affect protests outside some of the big events that are coming up? For example, NATO and the G8 summit, they are just around the corner. Uh, yeah, so these big events where world leaders uh, come together in one location, this can be one of the only opportunities for your average person out on the street, uh, your average Joe or your college student. This is one of their only opportunities to grab world leaders' attention and to influence their views. And if you're suddenly criminalizing uh, protests in these areas, then you don't have a feedback mechanism. And that's a huge part of our, democ of our democratic system is that you have the right to speak back. You have the right to speak out. And to take these things away is extremely troubling and I think in the long term will lead to more problems than if they had just left these rights in place. Now, um, the point of the bill, some would say, is that, um, you know, in the name of security, in the name of safety, um, what do you think about that purpose of this bill? 
Well, I think the Secret Service already exists to protect our uh, elected officials, high-ranking elected officials in Washington, and uh, they already have considerable resources. I think to take away peaceful protests doesn't make them any safer. And also, I mean, there's a chilling effect. That's the first problem, is that protesters who know that they could face a $25,000 uh, bail and they could be charged with a felony, they might not come out and protest in the first place. So instead of seeing thousands of people, you'll see a, a dozen protesters. Uh, the other problem is that you could see selective enforcement, where if somebody's in front of the White House and they're supporting President Obama's policies on, you know, whatever, on the war in Afghanistan or uh, NDAA, if there's a group that's supportive, the Secret Service might uh, turn a blind eye to that. But if there's a group that's negative and critical, they could crack down. And it's really selective enforcement that could be a big issue, because uh, the media will show, oh, there are protesters uh, but they're actually in support of the president or they're actually in support of this new law, but they won't show the other side because those other protesters uh, will be uh, charged. Now, um, what's interesting about this bill is that um Congress almost unanimous, unanimously agreed to it, and it's rare that both political parties see eye to eye these days. You know, we saw it during the budget debate, the debt ceiling debate, but a bill like this that has ramifications for citizens' fundamental rights, it receives bipartisan support. Why is that? You know, it's, it's really, it's extremely disturbing, and I don't have an answer for you, Liz. Uh, as you said, this has been a very partisan Congress. They can't agree to do anything. And yet, over the past few months, they've rapidly come together and agreed to things like this anti-protest bill and uh, a stunning attempt to crack down on internet freedoms. We saw SOPA, and they haven't stopped. It's just the media has stopped talking about it. Uh, McCain has uh, sponsored a bill which would allow the military to have oversight over U.S. civilian internet traffic. Uh, it seems like over the past few months, they've really been hell-bent on taking away Americans' rights. And I don't know why that is. I don't know why they've come to some sort of agreement over this. But there should be far more discussion and far more disagreement within the two parties before moving forward. And lastly, David, just want to ask you, will this change the way that you protest and exercise your freedom of speech? Uh, I'm going to be completely honest with you. I think it will. Uh, if I know that walking out on the street, I can face a felony, uh, if I'm just holding up a sign and protesting for what I believe in, I might stay at home. And that's the real problem, is that other people are going to think the same thing. And after you see the first few arrests, uh, college students and mothers and fathers and everyday people who don't have the resources or the legal teams to back them up, they're just going to stay at home. And a major part of our democracy is going to be dead. Uh, when you don't have the right to protest, you don't have much left. Um, hopefully that's not... Uh, that won't happen. Um, but thank you so much for coming on the show, David. Pleasure to have you as always. That was journalist and host of the DL show, David Seaman from our New York studio.